Imagine this, out on the frozen frontier, in a valley where winter nights slammed the land with ice-heavy winds and temperatures so brutal they could crack axe handles. One quiet settler started digging a strange trench behind his half-finished cabin, and when his neighbors asked what he was doing, he simply said he was building a heater that burns smoke instead of wood, and every single one of them burst out laughing because nobody in that territory had ever heard anything so foolish in their lives. Yet he kept digging anyway, shaping the dirt with the stubborn confidence of a man who de-learned something no one else knew. People joked that the cold had already frozen his brain, because who in their right mind would trust their survival to a tunnel under the cabin floor, especially one meant to store heat in the ground, which sounded like madness in a place where even campfires blew out from the night wind. But this man Elias Turner had spent enough winters watching settlers freeze or abandon their homesteads to realize that chopping more wood wasn't tea the answer, and that the only way to survive long term was to make the earth itself hold the warmth he needed. So while the others complained about creaking cabins and wood piles shrinking faster than they could cut them, Elias kept shaping that underground channel, laying flat stones along the bottom, packing clay around every seam, and forming a tunnel that snaked beneath his floorboards like a hidden artery meant to feed heat instead of air and he topped it with smooth river rocks he de-hauled from six miles away, because he believed rocks, once heated, would stay warm far longer than glowing embers ever could. Neighbors walked by and whispered that he was wasting precious time when he should via been chopping timber like everyone else, and some even joked that they'd send rescue dogs to dig him out once the tunnel collapsed. But Elias ignored every voice, every laugh, every shake of the head, because months earlier he had found pages from an old travel journal describing how Scandinavian farmers used long horizontal flues to trap heat under earth floors, letting warmth seep up long after the fire died, and he became obsessed with turning that idea into something a frontier homesteader could build with nothing more than a shovel, stones, and raw determination. By late November, when frost coated every cabin window in the settlement and most men were patching their roofs yet again, Elias hammered the final stone into place, sealed the entry chimney with thick clay, and prepared to test his creation, but even then, even after all those days of back-breaking digging, people stood at a distance and smirked, because they were sure he was about to smoke himself out, collapse his floor, or accidentally set half the valley on fire with his underground experiment. But here's where the story shifts, because on the first night he lit that fire just a single load of dry pie, stacked carefully so the flames would crawl slowly into the flue something strange began to happen, instead of roaring. The fire settled into a deep, steady burn. The smoke pulled cleanly into the buried tunnel, the stones absorbed the heat exactly as he'd hoped, and his cabin, which had always felt like a frozen coffin after sunset, started warming in a way that made him stop, stare, and whisper under his breath, it's working, it's really working, and while he stood there amazed, his neighbors stood outside in the dark, waiting for the smoke to pour out of the windows or the ground to crack open from the heat, totally unaware that inside, something was happening that would silence every laugh they had thrown at him. Section 2, How the Underground Smoke Eater Worked, 600 Words, The Real Magic of Elias Turner as Invention Wasn't. T. The fire itself, but the way he guided that fire through a long, slow journey underneath his cabin because instead of letting flames race straight up a chimney and waste their heat in the sky, he forced the smoke to crawl through nearly 20 feet of stone-lined flue buried inside compacted earth, and every inch of that path absorbed warmth like a giant thermal battery waiting to release its energy. Long after the fire went cold, and it was this simple physics more than any frontier luck that made the whole thing so astonishing. Once the firebox burned hot enough, the smoke was pulled naturally through the horizontal tunnel. Not with any fancy machinery but with the gentle draft created by the final vertical chimney at the far end of the cabin, and as the smoke slid through the narrow flue, the stones on the bottom and sides sucked up its heat, storing it the same way sun-warmed rocks stay hot hours after the sun disappears, transforming the entire ground beneath the cabin into a radiant platform that could warm the air without burning. A single extra stick of wood, most settlers relied on open hearths or crude stoves that blasted heat for a short time but lost everything the moment the flames died, forcing them to wake up every few hours in the night to feed the fire or freeze in their sleep. But Elias had created a system where warmth didn't tea come from firelight, it came from the earth itself slowly releasing stored energy in a steady even breath that didn't care whether the fire was alive or long finished because the buried tunnel was sealed in clay. No smoke leaked into the cabin, and because he used river stones rather than field stones, there was no risk of moisture-filled rocks exploding from heat, and the flat stones formed a perfect thermal staircase that carried heat forward without letting flames flash through too quickly, giving the system enough time to charge like a primitive battery every time he lit the fire. Neighbors who finally walked inside expecting to find a smoky disaster instead found a cabin with warm floors, steady air, and a gentle heat so even that it felt like standing near sun-warmed stone instead of the usual gusty blasts of old iron stoves and they were stunned to notice how silent it all was, no crackling, no popping, no roaring, just a deep quiet warmth that wrapped around the room like a thick winter blanket. 
Elias explained it in simple words. Wood gives heat once. Stones give heat twice, because instead of burning through piles of logs in one night, he was stretching every piece of wood across two days of comfort and that efficiency was something every settler desperately wanted, but never imagined they could achieve with frontier-era tools. By dawn, when the fire had burned out completely, the astonishing part began. The floor still radiated heat, the air still held a soft warmth, and the temperature inside remained steady even as outside winds screamed across the valley with enough force to tear shingles loose. And for the first time since settling that harsh land Elias slept an entire night without waking to feed the fire. And that s when the rumor started spreading across the settlement that the crazy tunnel had worked far better than anyone expected. And people began marching toward his cabinet with jokes this time, but with serious faces, wondering if this odd system could save their own families from the brutal winter ahead. S-E-C-T-I-O-N-3, the 36-hour warmth plus the respect 600 words. The second night changed everything, because Elias had let the stones cool completely just to see if his heater could charge again, and when he lit only a small bundle of kindling and a few split logs, the system drew the heat into the underground flue even faster than before, thanks to the dryness left in the stones from yesterday, s burn, and once again his cabin began warming steadily, rising degree by degree until the frost on the window panes melted into thin rivulets and the air felt like a mild spring afternoon instead of a frozen frontier night. Hours later, with the fire out completely, the stones continued to glow a soft, invisible heat that drifted upward through the floorboards, and as the night stretched into morning, and morning into a grey winter afternoon, the warmth barely faded, holding strong for nearly 36 hours before the temperature dipped enough for him to consider lighting another fire and this was the moment he realized he had built something powerful, enough to change how men survived winter in the wilderness. When the neighbors finally came knocking not laughing this time but humbled Elias stepped outside, opened the floor hatch to show them the buried stones still warm to the touch after a day and a half with no flames, and the settlers stared with the kind of disbelief usually reserved for miracles, because they knew how hard it was to keep a cabin warm for even six hours, let alone thirty-six, and seeing warmth held inside simple stones and earth struck them like witnessing a secret nature never meant to reveal. Word spread fast across the valley and beyond, the man with the underground smoke heater had cracked the hardest problem of frontier life, the problem of burning too much wood, sleeping too little and suffering too long through winters that punished every mistake and before long. People began asking for his help offering tools, food and even cattle in exchange for plans or labor to build. Heaters of their own knowing that a single warm night might be the difference between a thriving homestead and a family forced to abandon everything they built. Elias never bragged, never mocked the people who mocked him, never held a grudge. Instead, he walked to each cabin, looked at their layouts, judged the soil, and taught the settlers how to dig the right slope, how to line the flue, how to avoid moisture pockets, and how to feed the fire so it burned low and slow, because he believed that knowledge on the frontier was meant to be shared, especially knowledge that kept people alive. By midwinter half the cabins along the valley had their own versions of the underground smoke heater, some smaller, some longer, some better lined with clay, but all of them crafted with hope borrowed from Elias Turner's idea, and as those heaters warmed their families through brutal nights, people began speaking of him not as the strange man with the foolish idea, but as the settler whose stubborn digging saved an entire valley from freezing, and so the story lived on. How one man laughed at by everyone built a heater that stored warmth in the earth, released it gently through the coldest nights and proved that, even in the harshest frontier winters, ingenuity could outshine raw muscle and patience, could defeat an entire season of ruthless cold.